Dark Souls, I'ma let you finish. But Mad Max Fury Road is one of the best movies of all time! You might be wondering why I'm talking about Mad Max Fury Road today. It's because today, what day is it? 7th of May is the second anniversary of Mad Max Fury Road, one of my most favouritest movies ever. Two years ago I described it as, quote, ludicrously good, and having been watching it again, I can confirm that is still the case. It is preposterously excellent in almost every degree. It is... I've done an entire podcast about this. I will probably spend most of today's recording session finding excuses to talk about it. But it really is just so... As an action movie, it is beautiful, disturbing, weird, funny... It, the world building, all the little background details and the way characters talk, very little is told to you, but you can th figure out so much about the culture of these people by what they say and how they act. It's incredible. Anyway, welcome back to Dark Souls 3. This is a pretty good game, just like Mad Max, pretty good movie, by which I mean it's an incredibly good movie. I would say go go listen to my podcast about it, but as we've established, I'm probably going to spend the whole of today talking about it as well, so it would be a bit redundant to watch the podcast as well, unless you really want to. What What is what is this? Oh, it's a summon sign. That's exciting. Uh, previously, we killed two fucking bosses. Take that, Ellie. I told you. I told you, Ellie. I told you I'd beat the fucking bosses, Ellie. I told you I'd beat the fucking bosses, Ellie. You in the sky, where you apparently are. Oh god, Jesus! Oh jeez! I'm not incompetent, Ellie, I swear. Oh god, actually the volume's really loud on my ends. I'm gonna turn that down. There we go. <coughs> These skeletons are... There was something about them I remember last time. Oh, I had to kill him twice, didn't I? That was weird. There's another guy sneaking up on me, but I think... There we go. It's a bit weird, you kill them twice, but then they stay down. So, I don't I don't fully get that. I still love how badass my character looks now. She's like got this angelic gleaming armor with this spiky... Like, this is, you know, this isn't a, a matching set of armor, but the helmet really works with the uh, spikes, I think. Um, yes, because the catacombs from Dark Souls 1 are one of the more notorious areas, because the skeleton... Oh, Jesus! Oh. Okay. That was very intimidating until he just threw himself off the bridge. The catacombs in Dark Souls 1 are more of the more notorious areas because you can very easily want This guy's got one arm. Um, you can very easily wander in there early on in the game and there are high-level high level skeletons down there. And um, they don't die unless you kill the necromancers. At which point they will die if you kill them once, but um, you can only take out their health and they briefly lie down and then get up again. So it's possible to run through. I have done this as an early level character before, um, but it's very annoying. He's got no head! And one arm! That's a nice touch, that there's different varieties of skeleton. What have I been doing other than watching Mad Max Fury Road, which is one of the greatest movies ever? You should all... Okay, I'm going to hype the fuck out of this movie today, but I will tell you, as a, as a serious thing, I will hype the fuck out of it, but just just go into it expecting a very good action movie, and that's what you'll get, okay? Anything else is a bonus. Because that's what I went in. I went saying, oh, well, not even very good. I went in expecting, oh, supposedly this is good. So that's surprising. I'll watch it, and it's good. Because I like the old Mad Max movies, and I didn't think that um, a sequel years later would be very good, like most unnecessary sequels. But it's not unnecessary at all. It's its own... You don't even... I've had someone say this to me as well. You don't even need to watch the previous movies because they don't really have anything to do with Fury Road other than having the same main character. There's, I'd say there's references to the old movies, but not at all anything plot related necessary. Just, you know, more like it's consider it. It's like a, it's a 
story in the same with the same character in the same world, but it does in no way requires you to have seen the previous ones, which is quite unusual for us. You know, it, it's not even necessarily a sequel in that regard. It's just a different story with the same character. Um, um, one of the many, many excellent things about Mad Max Fury Road. Well, just for variety, what else have been, I've been doing? I've been playing some Phantom Pain again, which is really... which is. I've been playing and watching so many excellent things lately. Phantom Pain is really good. I've been challenging myself to try and do a... Um, no map and no goggles run. Because the fun thing about Phantom Pain is you can just... You can, as soon as you've beaten the mission, it lets you replay it anytime you like with extra objectives. Oh, sh... Wow, that was fucking lucky, Jesus. Because <laughs> I was just thinking, oh, glad I've got my shield up, and then it turned out to completely miss me anyway, so... Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this does really remind me of the catacombs, I have to say. At least now I'm paranoid to look out for those things on the floor. Um... Phantom Pain, again, it's weird that, shockingly, I tend to play and watch good things as opposed to shit things. Um, Phantom Pain's really good. And one of the nice things about it is you can, um, there's no difficulty settings when you start up the game, but you can basically create your own difficulty modes by, uh, this guy's freaking me out, I don't like him just standing there. Is it just him by himself? I think, I think... He's probably meant to aggro as you try and pick up that item there. There's no difficulty settings in Phantom Pain, at least at the beginning, but um, what you can do is basically, like it, like in most Metal Gear games, you can just create your own difficulty mode by, you know, saying, "Oh, I'm not going to use the uh, silences on the guns," or "I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that," or oh, "God, this guy's shooting at me." There's all the shit going on. Ooh. That sort of thing. Um, so, like me. Oh, jeez. Okay, this guy's actually putting up a fight. Uh, oh, jeez. I have a lot of Estus, but the individual Estus don't actually recharge much, if that makes sense. Titanite's always good. Um, so, because I'm a Snake Eater veteran, MGS3, I've been playing Phantom Pain with all these ridiculous challenges I've set myself, so I don't really use the map because it points out where all the enemy locations are. I don't really use the, um... I've started trying not to use the goggles because they have a similar problem as in Snake Eater, which is they just... they just highlight everything. And that's fine when you're getting used to the game, but for me, because I've played so much Metal Gear, I just find it too helpful. Let's be really encouraging, very slow, methodical. I'm not sure I can actually do anything to this guy, so I'm just gonna walk past him. Did I pick up that thing? Yes, I did. Okay. Gotta be honest, I might not have actually looked at what it was. Oh god, there's another one of these guys. I suppose once I'm familiar with this place, I can just run through rather than have to kill everyone. Oh. There does seem to be a recurring thing in this game where, um,. Guys with red eyes are significantly tougher. I was I meant to say earlier, I've noticed a thing. I think oh Jesus. In Dark Souls 2 they added this thing where drinking an Estus it would recover your health kind of a little it kind of progressively for a few seconds, rather than just all instantaneously, and the effect of that is you could kind of tank a bit more damage a bit more easily, I think. And they seem to have got rid of that here, so, uh... You know, I was just thinking of that, um... I think... I've been, I've been trying to play New Vegas not too long ago again, because I've never actually finished Fallout New Vegas, um... Despite playing... Well, possibly because I played Fallout 3 to death, um... I've just never got around to finishing New Vegas, um... And one of the things I remember from Fallout 3, and it's in New Vegas as well, is, um... These stim packs that you use for health, they weigh nothing, they're not particularly expensive, you find them everywhere, and you can just pause the game and use a stim pack, and there's no real... You know, compare, if imagine if in Fallout, 
this is my looking at the screen I'm going to uh, address you moment um yes you hang on yes you there you <laughs> um imagine in fallout if you use the stim pack and you couldn't just go to the pause menu and use it and then come out and there's no penalty you had to like press a button to use a stim pack and then there was like a second long animation of you jamming the stim pack in your in your leg or something you know, imagine what a difference that small change would make to the game, because now you can't just pause time and at your own leisure take four stim packs. You know, instead you have to do it real time and um, with a time penalty that leaves you open to a further attack if you're not careful. You know, it's so basically like the Dark Souls system with the Estus. You know. I find I can't actually think of too many games like that, but I think Dark Souls would be basically broken if you could just pause time and take as many Estus as you like. And that's ignoring the fact that the stim packs also in Fallout don't weigh anything, which is really weird. Like, even if they weighed one pound, that would be something. <laughs> The fact that they don't weigh anything is just really... Like, a small change I in my Skyrim, one of the Skyrim mods I have gives money weight. And I didn't like that idea when I first heard of it, but then I actually... When I started playing, I realised it made a lot of sense, because it kind of... It meant, if you hoard money, you end up just having all this... Like, an individual gold coin won't weigh much. Oh, I got that. That's nice. <laughs> you fell off the ledge, but I still got the Titanite. Um... An individual gold coin will weigh very little, but when you have a thousand or ten thousand gold coins, that does add up. And along with the mod also reducing your... Like, one of my big issues with Skyrim always was, um, possibly even more than Oblivion, it seems like you can just carry so much shit. So one of my, one of my lovely changes to Skyrim, I like the idea that you have so much carrying weight and also combine that with not being able to fast travel, and suddenly you it just vastly reduces the... Because you make far too much money in Vanilla Skyrim, I think. Like, as soon as I reached the first city, I was able to buy a house. And that just... There's, there's no... There's no sense of adventure there. There's no sense of, ah, I would like to buy a house, I'd better save up for that. And then, you know, it's satisfying when you earn enough money to get a house. I'm not sure where I'm meant to go here, I have to say. I'm kind of running in circles because I don't know where to go. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything obvious. It kind of looks like you, there's nothing to. Let's let's be thorough about this. Oh Jesus! You can't jump that gap. No, definitely not. There's anything down here? Is there anything here? No. Okay. It's a mystery. I almost saw there might be a door there, no. It's just a pointless little corner where you get to shoot them, I suppose. Um, I guess I was just thinking because there's so many there's so many little touches in Dark Souls because I've played the game so many times I just don't think about them. This is why it annoyed me so much in Dark Souls 2 that they brought back the um, the disposable healing items that they had in Demon Souls, which I thought it's a vastly worse system than what Dark Souls 1 introduced, and and the silly thing is, oh god, the silly thing is in Dark Souls 2, after like a third of the game you never need to really use those disposable healing items again because you have so much Estus anyway. So that, that I guess that, that kind of was, was kind of my, my, if there was one issue with Dark Souls 2 that I had is that there's all these little ideas which don't feel very well thought out. Even ideas that might have been good, like weapons degrading faster, that might have been good. I mean, it's okay, but it just ends up being annoying. It doesn't feel like it adds anything other than just inconvenience. Although it's not as bad as the Demon Souls, the the um, item carry... In Demon Souls, there's a, you have your weight limit, but you also have a item carry limit like you would in Skyrim now. In Skyrim, I love that there's only so much stuff you can carry. This is an interesting comparison, actually. But in Demon Souls, it's really annoying that there's only so much you can carry. 
because it, it interrupts that process of just trying to beat a level and it turns into you trying to just, just having to go back constantly micromanage your infantry and I guess it has some effect in that it limits how many you might say oh I just can't carry all of these healing items with me I can only carry some of them if I want to carry all my armor as well or something I guess but Dark Souls, oh, I say Demons, Demons Dark Souls is just not the sort of game where that feels like something I want to waste my time doing. It doesn't fit the... I feel like I've been here. I might be wrong. Oh, connection to Dark Souls 3. <laughs> Server was lost. Have I been here? Oh, I'm just going to disconnect because I'm not sure. Um, so that's that. What else have I been doing? I'll just talk about Phantom Pain some more, because fuck it. <laughs> um, I noticed something new in Phantom Pain as well, I'd never seen this before, because after 80 hours I've only just reached the... I love Phantom Pain so much, I just get distracted constantly by little side quests and things, and after literally 80 hours of gameplay, that's not an exaggeration, I've only just now reached the second area, because you start in Afghanistan and then you get to go to Central Africa, and I've only just got to Africa after 80 gameplay hours. It's kind of nuts. Um, I'm pretty darn sure I've been here now. Yes. Yes, because that's... Ah, okay, this looks promising. Oh, I see. This confused me a lot, but I think I see where I am now, okay. There's just some skeletons down here, aren't there? Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh, that's not skeletons. Oh no. <laughs> it's like they heard me. <laughs> it's just some skeletons. That'll be fine. Oh no. I was just thinking this would be a good place for a thing to roll down. And then that did catch me off guard. GG, Dark Souls. I probably should have just stayed in the, mi in the middle of the path and tried to, uh, what do you call it? Take uh, take the hit rather than just get knocked off the path. <laughs> oh well, I'm just seeing how many souls I need to. Uh, I've lost like nine thousand souls, which isn't ideal. Uh, ember. Oh, yes, I'm going to try and use these these like twenty embers I have lying around because I know that they. Is this the right way? Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm really bad at direction today. Oh god, but I was talking about Phantom Pain. I noticed something new in Phantom Pain I've never noticed before. I was scanning like, I was like, because I love that feeling in Phantom Pain of like, oh there's a base and I'm gonna like scan it, I'm gonna I'm gonna like get my binoculars, well m my monocular, because Big Boss has one eye, my monocular and I'm gonna scan the base and see how many guards and stuff there are, maybe they've got some mortars and stuff I can use. Um, um, and I was scanning this base and I noticed this guard that I didn't seem to be able to, um, like, s he didn't turn up on my goggles and he wasn't, like, being marked with the goggle, with the, um, monocular thing. I tend to just call them the binoculars because fuck it. Um, and then I noticed as I got closer he was actually an inflatable decoy. He wasn't a real guard, he was just an inflatable that they'd set up. And I had no idea that was in the game. That must be that might be a feature activated when you get to Africa or something because there there are little there are touches like that. Um, if you do a lot of sniping in Phantom Pain, the guards will start wearing helmets, for instance. And if you do a lot of um, like I think it's just I guess if you go loud, they start bringing uh, they start bringing uh, these big shields that they carry around with them. I like how the guards kind of respond to your strategy like that, because um, it's one of the few ways that uh, Metal Gear game has tried to counteract some of the more OP options. Like, you've always been able to use a sniper, and there's never really been much penalty to just sniping people from long distance. So it's nice that they think, oh, I'll put a helmet on, or I'll get a shield. So this must be another one of those where they just start using these inflatable guards, and 
And they've, they've, they've been cropping up with surprising regularity. Like, if there's a big base, there will be a couple of these little inflatables. And it's just... It's funny, and I also like how it genuinely confused me for a few minutes. Like, I genuinely was thinking, oh, there's a guard there. Like, at a glance, it just looks like a guard, especially from far away. And then it was only because I was confused by it and I took a closer look. I went, oh no, it's not a guard. Like, if I was trying to snipe someone and I just shot him without thinking, I would have gone, oh, it's an inflatable thing, and I would have set off an alert without even um, accomplishing anything. God, there's a lot of skeletons. Don't give up, skeleton. He'll beat me if you try hard enough. Oh, look, you died. Uh, whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah, I've got this thing where if I get consecutive hits, I get a little bit of health regen, don't I? Let, let's give this a go. Hang on. that do anything? I don't fully understand how it works. It's like... I get two or three hits, and then the little icon appears on the left. Um, I'm just trying to see if there's any any places I can cut out of my trip. I don't think there's any point in going that way, so I'll go this way. Uh, the only thing is, there's those two tough buggers down here, aren't there? Where is he? I like how the player ghosts still make me jump sometimes. I'll be if I'm if I'm exploring a new area, I'm on edge, and I'll just see a ghost unexpectedly, and it makes me go there. Come on, come on. You and your you and your hoodie, you you hoodlum you. Oh. I think he's like a thief because he's got this hood on and he throws. Daggers. Aha! Kuk kukri, that must be what they are, yeah. Koko kuchu! Seemed like an intelligent thing to say at the time. Something else I could talk about is, um,. If you've made the mistake of watching these videos, you might have noticed I've suddenly started. For some years, I've had a little schedule going on on the channel where I'll up, uh, well, schedule a video so it's one video a week, and then there'll be occasional bonus shit if I've got a lot of stuff or whatever, like a podcast or whatever. Um, but just very recently, I've decided the whole schedule was kind of stressing me out because it felt like I'd record something and then it wouldn't actually go live on the channel for like three months. And it just felt weird how there was always this huge delay in uh, what I was doing. It's like the videos were never current, you know? And that really bothered me for some reason. And then I spent a lot of time thinking what order should the videos go up in and all of that. And I think I've decided, because this is just a stupid hobby, this is something I do for fun. I don't want a hobby to stress me out unnecessarily, that's what jobs are for, you know? Like, maybe if I was making 50 quid a video, it'd be different. <laughs> But I certainly am not making any significant money, I can assure you of that. Um, so, I'm being paid in exposure. Those 10 views per video really add up. I don't trust this thing now, because I've got my souls back, but... <laughs> I don't know if it was just a one-off, or... Oh shit! Oh! Oh! I like that it's a ball of skeletons, that's cool. I'm gonna leave a message here, because that, that's gonna catch a lot of people off guard. Oh shit! Oh, he's coming back! That was a guard expected. Oh god! Ah! <laughs> oh my god! Ah, I'll give him credit, that genuinely caught me off guard twice. Okay. Let's start writing a message. Hang on. Hang on. Be wary of trap. There we go. So I assume you can't kill this thing and you just have to try and get around it. Oh, fuck! I should have thought, shouldn't I? I should have given it a more generous. <laughs> oh, fuck.